installment of the series. Um, so I'm Julius and this is going to be a bit of a Prometheus introductory topic learning session about metric types in Prometheus, the open source monitoring system. Um, so first, a uh, couple of tidbits about me. I co-founded Prometheus back in 2012 sorry, back in 2012. Um, later on, founded PromCon, the conference around Prometheus, if you still remember what events are. Uh, also started freelancing around that time, just helping companies with Prometheus, training, consulting, development. Um, and then this year got an idea for a product, PromLens, and started PromLabs um, to both continue my consulting and the training, but also try out this new product. So. Um, PromLabs is building PromLens, which is kind of a PromQL power tool and query builder and inspector and analyzer. So you see a bit of a demo screenshot on the right. That's just what I'm doing. Uh, check it out if it's thing. Uh, other than that, let's jump right into the meat of the topic. So let's look at metric types in Prometheus in general. I think a lot of people have somewhat of an idea of that there are different metric types in Prometheus and maybe even you don't know some of them in the names, but don't really know how they play out across the different uh, parts of the Prometheus ecosystem. So that's what we want to really go through systematically today. So everyone kind of has that nailed down. So um, we generally want to measure different types of aspects of systems. Um, and services, and for these types uh, of different aspects, we, have, we measure them with a different type of metric in Prometheus. We have four types of metric, uh, metrics in Prometheus, the gauge, a counter, a histogram, and a summary. And I'll just briefly go through what they actually mean and you know, how, they, how they track things. Um, and then later on, we'll go uh, and look at how these are tracked to the different parts of Prometheus. So a gauge is some kind of value that can go naturally up or down. Um, it's a current count, a current tally of something. Uh, often the value that you're exposing with a gauge already exists in some form and you're just exposing it. So uh, it might be the current queue length, memory usage, uh, or the number of threads or so, and you're just kind of sticking a gauge into whatever is happening there. That's why it's called a gauge, I guess. Um, and getting a reading, like what is the current current uh, situation that's going on there. Uh, so a number that just goes up and down. Um, the second type of metric in Prometheus is a counter metric. Uh, counters in Prometheus are cumulative totals. We really like to measure certain things in cumulative totals in Prometheus. For example, if you are uh, in an API server that handles HTTP requests, you would just count and count and count as you handle each request, you just increment and counter with every request that you handle. Uh, even something like CPU usage, which you might sometimes think about like as a current percentage or so, we actually like to track it as a counter of seconds spent in certain CPU modes like idle system user and so on. Um, so, you know, these might be discrete integer events that you're counting up, but it could also be seconds or other floating point events. But the important thing is counters in the normal case can only go up. Um, and then typically you wouldn't ever want to look at the actual absolute value of a counter. You always want to first process it and uh, stick it later in PromQL, for example, to the rate function, gives you the per second increase um, and so on. So the absolute value of a counter should never really matter. Then you have certain things that you want to track the distribution of the value size of. The most famous example is request durations or latencies, where you want to see how long does it take to handle, um, you know, the different types of HTTP requests in your application and you want to categorize the durations into buckets or categories. Um, in Prometheus, uh, so what you see here as an example is a, um, a normal histogram. Um, where, for example, we have received 20 requests that have finished between zero and 25 milliseconds, 40 requests that have finished between 25 and 50 milliseconds, and so on and so on, um, for a total of 105 um, events. 
And the last bucket actually, like the upper bound stretches to infinity, which is kind of just a bucket that, uh, you know, is a catch-all bucket there for, for uh, if, if we didn't provide a really large upper bound for um, a manually specified bucket. Prometheus, though, tracks histograms in a cumulative fashion, meaning that each bucket contains the events that are already counted in the previous bucket. So if we show exactly this histogram in a cumulative fashion, it would look like this. Um, so this bucket includes the 20 from this, and this one includes the 60 from this, and so on. Uh, so the values only increase for older buckets, uh, for, for the subsequent buckets. Um, another way to track the distribution of values is using summaries in histograms, which give you direct calculations of quantiles coming directly from an instrumental process. Uh, quantile is just a more general, per, uh, general case of a percentile. Um, we typically um, specify the quantile between zero and one, and in the percentile, it's between zero and 100%. Um, but conceptually, it's the same. It's just how you, how you talk about it. Um, so for example, you might track something around uh, with a summary, like what is the 99th percentile, 90th percentile, and 50th percentile latency or, uh, across a number of requests. Um, but the types of things you would track in a summary would be very similar to what you track in histogram. It's just kind of looking at it from a different statistical angle. So now we want to look at how these different metric types get expressed along this entire change. Uh, when you instrument a service, how they then get exposed over the wire as Prometheus scrapes them, what the Prometheus server does with them after getting them from a target and then how you like what you need to know when working with these types in ComQL. So the first bit instrumentation. Um, I'm going by some examples using the, the uh, Go client library and I'm so for each of these metric types I'm just going to look at how to create the metric type and then how to use it in the simplest way. Um, Over and uh, what do you do if you want to have more labels on it and so on? Um, because that's kind of unrelated to the types. So in the simplest case, if you want to create a gauge, you just give, you give it a name and you give it a help string, which we'll see a bit later where that ends up. Um, the help string is really just for humans to understand the meaning of, of that metric. Um, and in these client libraries, you really see probably the strongest expression of the metric types relative to the other parts of Prometheus in that every API object of the different types has different methods. For example, a gauge, since it can go up or down, has a value to set an absolute value, for example, setting it to zero here, but it also has increment and decre decrement methods and you know, ones that just go up uh, one or, uh, or minus one or up a certain amount. Uh, counters are pretty similar. You create, it, you create them in a very similar way, but they don't have any way to set them to an absolute value because you should never care about the absolute value of a counter. There are some situations where you might get an existing counter from a third party system that you want to just translate into the Prometheus metrics format. Um, but for that, you would use a different, like you wouldn't actually use direct instrumentation. You would use this thing we call constant metrics to just bridge that value over. So when you're tracking events yourself, you usually just want to increment by one or add a certain amount. For example, if you want to add the number of seconds spent in processing. Now these counters do reset to zero when the process that tracks them restarts, but that is totally fine as functions such as rate completely can deal with these uh, resets as we'll uh, talk about later. Histograms get a bit more involved. Same thing with name and help, but you will need to specify a bucket configuration. Uh, you don't need to specify the lower bound of a bucket because the histograms are cumulative. So every bucket conceptually starts at zero and then goes to a certain upper boundary of latency in this case. Um, for example, the first bucket here would contain any requests that spend between zero and 
50 milliseconds and so on and so on. Um, and the only method that you have on a summary, uh, on a histogram, is to observe a value into it. So let's say you just handled a given event and it took a given amount of time, in this case, 420 milliseconds. You would just say, well, this is how long it took. Please observe it into this histogram. And then internally in the Go Client library, it would increment the right category counters for these buckets. Um, so for example, uh, this one, uh, this request uh, took 420 milliseconds. Um, so it would uh, increment any of these buckets that, are, that have an upper bound uh, that is uh, larger than this value. So this bucket would increment it, like all the buckets starting from the 0 0.5 one. Okay, summaries, similar thing. Instead of buckets though, you need to provide uh, the quantiles, uh, the, yeah, the percentiles that you want to calculate and the error margin that you want to have for each of these. So in this case, we want to uh, calculate in a streaming fashion, the 50th, 90th and 99th percentile. And the, the way you observe values into a summary is exactly the same as with a histogram. You just get a different result. Mm. There's an important trade-off between histograms and summaries that you should be aware of. You cannot aggregate quantiles or percentiles across different processes, label dimensions over time or so. It's just not statistically valid to average over quantiles. So these quantiles that come from summaries, they are really only useful for looking at like from a given single instance, uh, gives you the, the 90th percentile latency for that instance or so, but you cannot do much with it afterwards. You can't aggregate it, et cetera, et cetera. Et cetera. With histograms, you can totally do that. Um, as long as the different histograms from different processes and other label dimensions share the same uh, bucket configuration, you can sum over those buckets, you can aggregate at and, and look at the entire system latency, for example. Um, on the flip side, though, the, you need to choose the right uh, bucket configuration for histograms. Like if you choose very few buckets, then it will be quite a low resolution histogram. And it's not great for then approximating quantiles backwards from that. Uh, but if you choose too many buckets, it will become very expensive to ingest all the resulting time series. Uh, so there's, that's, that's a bit of a painful topic, um, but there's a best practices document linked from here um, that goes into the trade-offs, but also the error margins of this um, histogram to quantile calculation. All right. So let's look at what these different metric types look at look like on the wire. So Prometheus comes by, scrapes your target, and what gets sent in the text format over the wire. The challenge here is that the actual data model that gets transferred and stored in the Prometheus TSDB is really simple. Uh, it knows about the metric name, it knows about uh, the labels, and then just sample values. But it has no idea about metric types at all. So um, somehow we need to flatten out our complex metric types into the text format that gets transferred. So for gauges, that's pretty simple. You just specify the metric name, specify the value, done. It's a single time series. Um, you also transfer uh, the help and type meta information. We'll see what happens with that in the future. Uh, counters, same thing. One line, one time series. Where it gets more complicated is with histograms and then also summaries, because these are really hybrid metric types. Um, if you look at the histogram and the individual buckets of a histogram, you could say that each bucket series, uh, each bucket is actually a counter in itself, because for every category, which is a bucket, we count up how many requests we have seen that fit in there. And so rendering a histogram into the text format ends up looking like this where you have a series of underscore bucket series where uh, that have an LE label. LE stands for less than or equal. So it means uh, this bucket counts all the requests that took less than or equal to 50 milliseconds, for example. Um, 
And you have this implicitly generated infinite bucket that basically goes from zero to infinite to catch all events. And then what you also get is a cumulative sum and a cumulative total, meaning like what's the total time spent in requests and what's the total number of requests. Um, because this is very simple to just track in addition. For a quantile, it's kind of similar. You get the same sum and count um, for freebie time series, so to say, um, but the quantiles are tracked in a quantile label. All right, so what happens when Prometheus now has scraped this and wants to store it? Actually, not that much. So currently, uh, for the longest time, actually, the Prometheus server has just thrown away this help and type metadata well, so the actual you know, gauge counter histogram summary type that gets sent in this comment line, uh, same for the help. But for a while now, it is actually storing that for every target and metric in memory. So you can at least query it over a separate API, not via PromQL, but a separate API. And uh, this is useful for UIs, right? Like if you type a metric name, auto-completing in Grafana, it's already happening, will happen in Promlands as well, uh, that it shows you the, the type directly in the autocomplete, for example, and then also a little pop-up next to it that might show you what the meaning of the metric is. Uh, but other than that, the TSDB, for example, it has no idea about metric types. It just stores <laughs> label sets, samples, done. It has no idea about this. Um, but there is at least a proposal to propagate this metadata to remote storage systems, which, you know, there's, there's more and more hosted Prometheus uh, cloud providers. And typically you run some local Prometheus or Prometheus style agent that collects data locally in your infrastructure and forwards it to whatever vendor. And it would be really nice. And if you're working in that vendor's UI to also have that type information. And currently, uh, since we don't store it and don't really process it much, uh, it doesn't get sent to that remote storage system over the remote write protocol. But there is um, a proposal to, to make that happen in the future. So there, there will be more metadata propagation. All right, so the last bit of that entire pipeline is working with the data that we have collected in the query language PromQL. And the big surprise surprise is that PromQL itself also has no idea about metric types, at least no first class concept of it. It only knows time series again, but it does have some functions that expect data to be in a certain shape, um, meaning that either the sample values inside have to kind of adhere certain rules like for, with a counter, it's expected to only go up or a histogram needs to have an LE label, like a function that, that expects a histogram as an input. Um, so PromQL cannot directly actually check that certain time series belong really to a certain, um, like were generated by, uh, on the instrumentation side by a given metric type, but they, they try to infer these things. So some examples are uh, these functions, rate, I rate, increase, and presets, which only work properly if you input a counter metric because uh, let's take rate for an example. Um, whenever it sees a decrease in the value over the time that you're trying to rate, like the rate over the last one hour, it thinks, oh yeah, this is a counter reset. I will act as if that didn't happen. So if you had uh, the counter going from 10,000 to 10, it will think, that actually now there have been 10,010 requests and calculates the rate accordingly um, because it thinks it just missed a reset of a process restart and so on. So if you try to use any of these functions for gauge metrics, which can naturally go up and down, you will not get like uh, the proper rate uh, of increase or decrease. You will only get positive uh, values, which would be complete garbage uh, output for, for gauges. So be careful to only use these functions with counters. Uh, same thing the other way around. There are functions for completely, you know, treating increases and decreases the same and just um, predicting or um, tracking the, the development of series over time um, for gauges, delta, I delta, et cetera. 
But if you put counter metrics in there, these functions would also give you bogus results because they don't uh, treat the counter resets the proper way. So be sure to use the right type of function for the metric that you have. There is one more type aware function for histograms, histogram quanta. Um, and basically it expects you to give it an entire set of input series that needs to have consistent LE labels that are passable into floats, so the upper bucket boundaries. And um, yeah, it, it of course expects the shape of the data that you pass in to be a sensical histogram. Otherwise you will either get garbage data or potentially an error as well. Uh, for summaries, there's not really any specific function that applies to them only um, because you can't do much with quantas anyway. Like I mentioned earlier that you cannot aggregate them. So it's kind of important to just be careful. It's a bit unfortunate that in the early design of PromQL, we, we didn't really have this in our minds to have first class metric type support directly in the database, directly in the language and so on. It might happen at some point in the future with like some new major version of Prometheus, but it's not directly on the horizon. Um, so currently you do have to just be careful what metrics are you working with and what functions are you using with them. And uh, it helps to follow the metric naming conventions that we have in the Prometheus IO docs. Um, where, for example, it will tell you if you're defining a counter metric name, uh, append an underscore total suffix to the metric name so that anyone reading it knows it's a counter. And if it's a gauge, don't have a suffix. So, you know, you have uh, certain naming conventions that help you recognize what uh, metric is which type. Um, but already, you know, we have this metadata API. So we hope to offer better help in the future around um, support in the UI. Let's say you're putting a gauge into rate function. It could show you a warning at least saying like, hey, I think this is a gauge you're putting in rate. Maybe that's not what you want to do. Do you want to fix this? Um, right. So just to summarize, um, I would say in the instrumentation part of Prometheus, that's where you encounter these different metric types the most. Um, the exposition format already kind of, you know, mo knows mostly about the normal flat time series model of Prometheus. So there's where they need to get kind of flattened out into time series. Um, in the processing and storage part, it's mainly about in-memory metadata for some UIs at the moment. And in PromQL, there are type aware functions, but there's no direct first class notion of these types. All right, um, I hope this was useful um, and let me know if you have any questions. Thank you, Julius. I'm stopping the recording now.